Set fire. Three, two, one. Hey guys and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this. My very own prototype of the Mandalorian Whistling Birds. This device that I call the Mando Wrist Rocket is from the Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian. And it's just one of the weapons that he uses in the show. In the series so far, he's only ever even used it once. And it's a little bit hard to describe what it is and how it works. So I think the best way is just to show you. Here's a clip from part three, the part of the show where he uses it. Whistling birds are a powerful defense against multiple enemies. Use them sparingly, for they are rare. Stand up! Alright, now that you've seen an example of what this thing does, let's talk a little bit about how I built it. Now, essentially what we're doing here is reverse engineering something that only exists in the fictional world. So the only way for us to figure out how it works is to look at the video and do what I call a design breakdown. So figure out what each of its components are and figure out how we'll be able to replicate those. So let's take a closer look. All right, so right away here in the first clip, you hear her explain that this is for multiple enemies. And then I can see I count 12 individual rockets each which has a glowing tip on the end. And then we see when she places the last one, they all lock into place inside what looks like a cone shape. That must be where all the rockets themselves are mounted. So then here on the second clip, we notice that there is a slight wrist motion and that seems to arm the rockets. They all shoot out and get ready to fire. And then an interesting thing right here, you notice his, his arm is actually pointed almost straight at the ground yet the rockets somehow flip up and still are able to hit their targets, which is kind of interesting. That won't be really possible, I don't think, with any type of rocket. They'd hit the ground way before they'd have time to change direction that fast. But it looks like he arms them and then they fire and then they kind of find their own target, so they're target tracking and then explode when they hit their target. And they also have kind of a whistling sound, if you notice that. Okay, so to simplify what we found out in the design breakdown is that this is an arm-mounted device that is activated with the wrist movement and then that causes multiple rockets to fire and attack the targets. So in order for me to build this, I had to break it down a little bit further to figure out how this thing works. And number one was to do a little bit of research to figure out how the thing is supposed to look. like Things like what material is it made out of and how is it worn. And then two, we have the rockets themselves Three, we have what ignites those rockets, so how are we gonna light them? And then four is what it's all mounted to, which is the van brace or the arm mount piece itself. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and explain a little bit about each one of those things and compare it to what we saw in the show and how I came up with the design or fix for it. So number one, let's talk a little bit about the aesthetics. This was actually pretty difficult because it's really hard to get a full look at the entire Van Bracer, Mando Wrist Rocket thing, whatever you want to call it, because it's never really shown that much in the show, and then when it is, it's very brief. So the first thing I tried to do was go through and just pause the show and take a look at it, or take a screenshot of each frame that it was shown in and see if I could get an idea of how it looked. That didn't work out very well because Anytime you pause or stop on one frame while it's in motion, you get a lot of blur. So most of those pictures weren't really usable. I could get a vague idea, but they weren't very good. So then my second approach was just to do some online research, do a little bit of Googling. And I found one picture that I thought I could use. And basically the entire design is based off of this one picture. Now, that isn't much to go off of, but that's what I had to work with. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the projectiles. Now in the show, we see that they have kind of a whistling fire trail. Um, they're target tracking. They can change direction really fast, and they explode at the end, or when they find their target. Now there's some of that stuff that just really isn't feasible with current technology, 
that would be mostly the target tracking just would be so hard to do especially with something so small but uh, I think we can come up with something so what I ended up going with was using a bottle rocket and that's because a bottle rocket is essentially the same thing as that except a non-lethal version so it has a whistling trail and it explodes with a report at the end and even though it's not target tracking if you've ever lit off a bottle rocket you know that they kind of travel in a somewhat unpredictable path so maybe I can still get it to arc some or at least have an area effect and then also the last thing was in the show there's multiple rockets so with our design we're going to see if we can fit all 12 that really depends on the diameter of the bottle rocket and we'll try to get as many to fit as we can all right so now let's talk about the ignition system in the show i assume there was some sort of electronic trigger that enabled all those rockets to fire but in our case since we're going to be using bottle rockets it's a little bit tricky because a bottle rocket is basically ignited by lighting the fuse which requires heat so what I think that we're going to end up doing is using some sort of heated filament and a heated filament is basically a wire that has resistance and a high temperature threshold. So when we have electricity passed through this wire, it gets really red hot and then basically I think it'd be hot enough to light a fuse. I think I'm going to go with that mostly just because you can get that wire to really be any shape you want and you can get a lot of really high heat in a really precise spot. So depending on our design, I think a heated coil will work the best. And then last, but not the least important, is the van brace itself, or what all the electronics and rockets and everything is going to be mounted to. So for that, uh, we're going to need something that's metal, hopefully all metal, something that you can take on and off, and something that looks as close to the one in the show as possible. So the first thing that I started with was the van brace, which is the base of the entire project. So I started by cutting out each piece of metal to the right size that it needed to be, and then put it in the forge to heat up. And then once I got each of those to heat, I took them to the anvil and actually forged each one of those pieces to shape. And then once I had each one of those pieces, I welded them all together. And I also included a piano hinge that would allow me to open and close it. And I also a hidden pin that I could pull out and place in order for me to, to lock that around my arm. All right, so for prototype zero for the rockets and the ignition system, I did use bottle rockets and I did use a heated coil. Now there were issues with both of those things and I'll explain that in a little bit, but essentially what I had was five bottle rockets and a heated coil that was made out of spare parts. And the spare parts were sourced from a car cigarette lighter. And if you don't know what that is, they used to come in older cars and it was basically just a coil that when you pressed it in, it would apply electricity to that heated coil and then you would take it out and it'd be red hot and it'd be hot enough to light a cigarette. Now going with the concept, that was already something that I know worked. It already worked with 12 volts and it already was the length that it needed to be to get red hot at that voltage. So I figured if I had a 12 volt battery and that length of ribbon cable, I'd be able to get a heated coil. And I was able to get it hot, but the problem was each one of those bottle rockets had a fuse that rested against that coil. And the problem with that was that even though the coil was hot, there were gaps in the coil. So some of those fuses would not actually be touching the hot part of the coil and then it wouldn't light. The second problem was that the fuses were either they were just old fireworks or they were just inaccurate or inconsistent, but some of them, even though the ends would be burnt, would not light and then that rocket wouldn't fire. So the problem with prototype zero was fuse delay and inconsistency. Now when I did get rockets to fire, they were just really inaccurate. 
because I removed the stick from the bottle rocket. I did that hoping that they would still travel relatively straight, but I had to remove the stick otherwise they wouldn't fit in the design. So along with Prototype Zero, I wanted to include those really cool glowing ends on the rockets and I was going to try to combine them using a blue micro LED and the rockets together, but I decided that would be kind of a waste because I would basically be blowing up the micro LED lighted part each time. So I, come, I came up with an idea to use two different rocket holders. One would be used for show and that would have the blue micro LEDs and then one would be for actually exploding rockets and then you can basically just interchange them. And in Prototype Zero, that worked pretty well. And for the interchangeable cones on the lighted one, I basically would hit the same switch on the wrist and then it would just cause a cool sequence of LEDs to light up. And then I would be able to switch it with the ignition one and then I would be able to push that same button and it would cause the rockets to fire. All right, so Prototype Zero, five rockets, car lighter fuse, 12 volt battery, and a switch on the end. This is what that looks like. All right, so before we shoot the Mandalorian Van Brace Vessel Rockets, we're gonna use just the normal rockets as a comparison so you can see what these do on their own before we put it in the rocket. I was shooting six of those out of my wrist. That's gonna be crazy. All right, so now let's do one uh, without the stick and see what that does. It's gonna go random direction, so light that up, see what happens. Here we go. That was short. I didn't like that. It didn't go anywhere. Because it hit the. No, it just blew up. Okay, let's try another one. It should go. Oh, okay. have a faulty <laughs> Okay, let's try this one. There we go. Okay. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what they're supposed to do. So there's a chance that the ones I put in my rocket <laughs> might just blow up inside. That's not good. Okay. Time to suit up. Put on the actual one and let's give it a test try. Okay, let's try this again. We'll load some more up here. get any to go off this time. So you can see that Prototype Zero wasn't perfect. Definitely didn't really meet the expectations that I had. I could have stopped there. I did create a Mandalorian Mando wrist rocket thing and it did shoot rockets, but it just really wasn't satisfying to sit there and wait and only have a few fires sometimes and never really get that effect that I wanted. And not even be able to hit a target, which was kind of disappointing. So for the final prototype or prototype revision one, I made a lot of changes to help smooth out some of those things. 
the first thing I did was redesign the bottle rockets. So I kept, I think, three or four inches of that stick on the bottle rocket in the final design that would actually allow it to travel in a somewhat straight path, not completely random like before. The second thing is I had a lot more custom parts because I actually, in the process of doing this video, ordered a 3D printer and built that and then was able to use 3D printing and 3D modeling to design much more accurate parts. Now I printed each of those parts out of ABS plastic so they would be very heat resistant instead of PLA which would probably melt really quickly with the design that I have. But the most interesting thing about the final version is the totally redesigned ignition system and control system. So for the ignition system, instead of using fuses, I decided to get rid of them entirely. So I would no longer have to rely upon a fuse that would sometimes light and sometimes not. Just They were just too unpredictable. So what I did instead was I used a coiled wire. I used nichrome wire this time and actually had to figure out what length and gauge I needed with what voltage in order to achieve a hot coil. And then that would basically extend into the interior of the rocket and come up against the igniting part of the rocket. So then when that coil turned on and got hot, it would ignite that coil. The problem with using nichrome wire though is with the thin gauge, it tends to sag in the middle when it gets hot. So what I had to do to make sure that it would have a rigid structure was I took a small eighth inch diameter ceramic rod and then wrapped that wire around it, that heated coil around it, so that when it's turned on, it maintains its structure and is placed exactly where I want it to be. Now I did that with six different rockets. So I had six different independent coils on ceramic rods that would basically be a lot more reliable than the old version. So basically how this works in the final version is I push the wrist switch, which activates an input on the Arduino, which runs the Arduino program. That Arduino program controls the relays. So it turns on each one at the moment that it's supposed to turn on. And then when the relay is closed on that eight channel relay, it ignites the coils in the order that I want them to ignite, which basically fires the rocket instantaneously instead of waiting for a fuse delay in the order that I choose. That makes it really cool because I can basically change the Arduino program to be whatever I want and then the rockets will fire in that exact order, hopefully with that exact timing. This is all theoretical because I still haven't tested it yet, and I guess I hope that it works. All right guys, so in review, we did a design breakdown to figure out how this thing works and how we were gonna build it. We built prototype zero, prototype zero sucked, so we built prototype version one to fix those issues, and now here we are with this design, hoping that it's gonna work better than the last one. Now we haven't tested it yet, so I'm really excited to see how this thing does. Fingers crossed we fixed all those problems and now it's gonna work great. So we'll see you out on the field. Let's go try this thing out.
right, that about sums it up for this project. If you guys couldn't tell, this is the first video that I've ever done here on YouTube and the first one on this channel. So I promise the videos will get better and the projects are gonna be even more awesome. In the next video, I'm gonna be adding a flamethrower attachment to the Mandalorian brace. So if you wanna see that video, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.